So last time I left off talking about the subtext, and now I'm going to talk about uh, what happens in the cycle of innovation, because we said that it rotates as a cycle. And it's true, all of it, the incompetence, the revolution, the real. And what happened a while ago is that the world for students stayed the same pretty much for decades. You graduated, you worked for a corporation, you rose according to your ability. Some had careers, some had jobs, and hopefully you had some pedigree, like a degree from a good place. So that would help you get ahead. But the thing is, the wealth of our society was pretty much reserved for businessmen, doctors, and lawyers. And then there was a great cataclysm. The internet was born. And so what happened is that technologists finally crawled out from the doctors and the lawyers. Instead of providing services, it was about people who actually created things for people. And they became the giants. The meritocracy had, uh, had uh, well, uh, happened. Uh, and so a great war was fought. Basically, the insurgents, those who wanted to change the world and make a buck or two. And then on the other side, there were the incumbents. And those are the people who didn't want the world to change. Like I said, incumbents try to stop change. And so the world shook for four years in a great battle. And what happened? The insurgents got slaughtered. Uh, some rose to become giants. Some got crippled. And some were reborn. Some got eaten alive. Some people really cashed in. But the thing is, the world changed, and what the internet did is it broke down the barriers that anybody can get into the fight, can be the next new uh, insurgent. And so what happens, new warriors start to rise, although I'm somewhat tempted to take Uber and Twitter off that list. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm old school, you gotta make a profit. So what role are you going to play? One of these days I have to add the Star Wars music while I do this narration, don't you think? Uh, but this is the gold rush, and this happens. And so it, during this gold rush, are you going to let the world pass you by? So how do the insurgents get killed? They had bad business models. They were ahead of their time without a growth plan. It's okay to be ahead of your time, but what you need to do is be patient. And I call it the foxhole. Find a foxhole you can sit in that will bring in money and you can be patient and when the time's right then you can strike. And that's what Microsoft did. It took them 10 years before they became what they became. Dumb money, people, just because somebody gives you money doesn't mean it's a worthwhile project. And greed, vanity, ego, people <laughs> uh, driven by ego think they've got a business and they don't. But the biggest thing of all is bad preparation. They didn't have any education. They didn't understand what it is that they were actually doing. You don't have that problem. And so what is our age? Our age is defined by the web, mobile, the devices that keep improving and become more and more for us. What ties it all together is software, and it all sits on the cloud. That pretty much sums up our age. The technologies we're interested in uh, that affect us the most are called exponential technologies. And those are the ones that shake the very foundation of we live, that they touch everything. They change business, economics, like the semiconductor chip, for example. And in this tech, tech age, is about wireless AI and internet. Uh, of course, the problem is, is, are we replacing humans with new technology? That's the thing. Kevin Sistron, when he started Instagram, 30 million customers. How many people did he need to take care of all of them? 13. That's the problem with AI. The whole point to AI is to copy you, that the things that you have to do, now AI can make a 1,000 of you, 10,000 of you. The problem is, is that uh, you don't have to hire people. And the other thing you have to think about, and actually it was a Stanford lawyer who said this, which cracked me up to no end, and he was very brutal with the Stanford startup saying, you're not making the, any difference in the world. I mean, the Ubers and everything else, so what? You made life a little more convenient, but you know, did you solve disease? Did you solve income inequality? No. <laughs> 
And so then there are companies out there that actually go out and make a true difference, like Gilead solving hepatitis C. The thing is, when we look at digital features, and actually if you compare this to Maslow, essentially it started off with evolution, and that's it just got better. Then it became about streamlining of businesses and banks, and now, uh, so we're going through the base end of Maslow, which is what our needs are, but now things such as esteem, uh, realizing ourselves, that's where we're going now in this age of communication. Uh, the thing about digital products is about improving the personalization of products. And so I want to reach anyone, anytime, anywhere, figure out what it means, and not have any limits. And that's what our current digital focus is. So it's all about wider, deeper, faster right now. The thing is, due to the microsensors, we can measure pretty much any physical variable in the world that you're interested in. So we're mimicking how uh, our sense of touch, our feeling of temperature, and everything else. And not only that, but wireless and flexible interconnects make it form around us. And because of the networks, and this is the Internet of Things, all things can be connected. The thing is processing all that data. The thing is the cloud actually is in a simple place. Uh, you can't go it alone. There's so many elements uh, that you have to have partners. And the one thing about if you want to bet on an industry that's going to continue to grow, it's data. You don't see it getting any smaller. And then you have to think about how am I going to make money? Do I sell directly to businesses, to customers? Do I sell to businesses who sell to customers? What's going to work best for me? So I'm looking at software. First it was about efficiency, making things operate faster. Then it became about social. And now it's about data. The thing about things like machine learning, uh, AI and analytics, it's about smart systems. And that's that I don't need to tell the software what to do. The software knows what to do by the rules I've set with it. And so the thing is, the old paradigm of ownership is breaking down. And everybody has the same tools and uh, has same access to the same resources. So now it's all about creativity. Whoever gets it wins, and whoever doesn't, doesn't. In this age, it's defined by richness and reach. And richness is how personalized is the experience. And reach is how many people can we touch. And so the thing is, how are we going to continue? The holy grail is to complete those two. Actually, if you look at Michael Crow and ASU, what is Michael Crow's grand vision? It's the holy grail, that he wants to have the richest education, but reach and have an education for everyone. And so the way we're going to get reach is through the cloud, and richness is through personalization. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these. You can just read it. But essentially, data is about volume, how much I can have, velocity, how quickly I can get it, veracity, how truthful is it? Because let's face it, there's a lot of noise and a lot of garbage in terms of data. For example, if a bot is creating data, what good is that for you? No, you want to know what a person's doing. And then variety of data. It's more than just numbers or answers to questions. For example, how do you interpret video? How do you interpret pictures? To computer, it's just a bunch of you know numbers and pixelation. But how do you interpret that? An example, and this is kind of creepy, Facebook, for example, will find a picture of you and they will correlate what neighborhood you're, <laughs> you're standing in or whatever and look at your car and based on that figure out what your salary is, the fact that you are in that location, uh, what does that mean in terms of your preference and based on your picture how old you are and do the marketing on that. Like I said, creepy. But in this age of marketing, it's no longer before you put a product out there and then whatever, how many people wanted to buy the product, that was your market. And now it's about, no, I'm, I can personalize and sell to each individual. And since I know you better, I'm going to squeeze more than that average dollar that the aggregate gave me. But the thing is, the technology allows me to aggregate you back together. Manufacturing, because of automation, I don't need a lot of people to run a factory floor anymore. These machines can run themselves. Not only that, I can use smaller footprints, more generic tools. 
I get a whole bunch of 3D printers and have my own factory. Finance is not exclusive anymore, and it's also being deregulated, so anybody can become an investor. And so the impact is, is that that technology has had on us is that anybody can learn anything, but human functions are being eliminated, and because of that, wealth distribution is an issue. And that's why we need to really start thinking how we educate people. I mean, I feel bad for those poor coal miners, but let's face it, like you didn't see this coming. Uh, they really needed to transition and prepare for it. Uh, in terms of technology applications, this is the chain of technology that starts with the materials and goes up the line to form networks. These are all the technology-based industries. Dr. Cho has worked in pretty much all of them except for a telecom. I'm hoping never to work for a telecom because I'm hoping this job is my last stop. But the interesting thing is to look at the margins. Every industry has different margins. And the thing is, how can you get away with a low margin? Well, if your sales volume is high enough, you can get away with the lower gross margin. And the one that always offends me is biomedical for the simple reason through regulation that's what protects their big gross margins and why should that be even the defense industry got pushed back but how can the defense industry live on a 20 or 30 percent 25 or 30 percent margin well if your sales chunks are like 50 million dollars for a tank all of a sudden that's why you can get away with it uh, so where does the investment go primarily in software because cost is cheap Again, it's I want to make a uh, return on my investment. Uh, biotech and healthcare is the second one. Uh, and that's because the potential for long-term revenue, even though it takes a long time to uh, develop angels, pretty much the same uh, slant, except their second choice is actually media. Uh, for those of you who want to learn more about technology, here are just some websites that like to talk about technology. Uh, the U.S. patent, reading patents is a really good way to learn about technology. So summarizing this lecture, the thing we've learned is that technology is about cycles and the cloud and the other components such as the web or devices defines our rage. It makes us all equal. It's portable and accessible. We can measure most things and we can target it with precision. And what it comes down to is what separates you from everyone else is how you imagine and how creative you are.